Hi, welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss uh, how to register for the Homework Manager and e-textbook. So, important that you have this course ID number here. So this course ID number is going to be important to have because this is what links you up to this course. Now, click on My Finance Lab and eBook, and that will bring you over to the My Finance Lab and eBook uh, site. And here is where you want to click Register as a Student. So you're going to need your email address, your course ID, and some way to pay credit card or PayPal. Now, so when you go to register, put in the course ID here and continue to register. And you'll see that it will link you up with 330 Finance Spring Term. And it's taught by me, Michael Nugent. Uh, and what you're going to want to do is you could sign in if you have a username and password to sign in with. If not, because you may have used this, it might be a Pearson product like my management lab or my math lab. You may already have registered for the Pearson. If not, you can register, um, register for that now by creating an account. So if you don't already have a register, and you may want to just create a new account anyway, because I need to have your the same first and last name that you have in Solar or in Blackboard or signed up to Stony Brook with, so I can easily match you later to your username, uh, I'm sorry, not username, your first name and last name when you register. So if you click on create an account, it's gonna ask you for your email address, put in your Stony Brook email and then put in, you can create any username and password you want. I don't know what that, I will never see your username and password, that I just don't know. But it's important here when you do your first and last name to create a first and last name that is identical to how you register with Stony Brook. So you can see this on your solar when you log into the solar system where you uh, or if you log into Blackboard, there should be your the first and last name, which is your real first and last name and not a nickname because that in the past I've had big problems assigning grades because I don't know that Violet is a nickname uh, and it's not your real first name, and that you might have a last name that's common, where I have five students in class with the same last name. I just won't know who you are, and you'll get a, you'll get an, an F for the course because I assume you never registered for the course and did any of the coursework. Okay, so once you create the account, then you're going to get into um, the My Finance Lab section of Pearson to work on the class, and I'll show you what that looks like. Now remember. The My Finance Lab might be a little fussy if you have an outdated Chrome or Safari browser. So you might want to update your browsers. Um, that could be an issue. So any technical problems you have with My Finance Lab, don't contact me with technical issues. You There is a support, and I have it under announcements somewhere here. Pearson support, and here's the link to contact Pearson support to help you with any technical problems you might have. Uh, the important thing to do is disable pop-up blockers because there are pop-ups that come up when you do the homework. That's typically the issue, so you may want to disable a pop-up blocker if that, but you know, Pearson usually lets you know that that's an issue and gives you ideas on how to fix that. Um, but once you're in and you've registered and you signed into the course, you see the course here. Important, the important things to know is that you want to go to the Pearson eText. So the Pearson eText is the textbook. So this is the textbook for the course. And if you launch the textbook and you can, you know, this will work um, pretty well on a MacBook or a PC. And the textbook is here. You have the table of contents and you can go to any part of the textbook quite, quite quickly. Um, and then once you're in, it will have a sub area. So you can go to a page real quick. And what's nice is you can search for something. So if there's a term you want to search for, it'll come up there. Um, one zero point one point three. Capital oh, budgeting techniques. It looks like it'll even read the investment projects firms. This is new. It will even there is a playlist. It'll even read the textbook to you. So if you don't want to read it, you can listen to it. And of course, you can always read it uh, at your leisure. And, you know, uh, so the, the, there's a lot of advantages to having a fully electronic textbook. In addition to reading, there's a way to, to take notes on the information. There's um, 
create a study deck. I guess there's a couple extra tools so you can change the size of the font or the look of the font. So there's a lot of uh, customization you can do here in the e-textbook. So it's a really great solution uh, for reading the textbook. The second most important uh, menu path to go to is assignments. So here on assignments, they will list all the assignments. So right now, the midterm and final, you won't be able to do. This is an instructor view, so that's why um, I switched this. Well, this is the instructor view, so I can see the midterm and final, but you won't be able to click on this until the actual date it's due. There is a, sam a sample exam that you could you can look at to give you an idea of how the exam works. Um, so if you click on the sample exam, this will give you an idea. There's a give, it gives you, this is just for the sample exam. So the sample exam, I set the timer to be 30 minutes on the sample exam and you can start the test. So this works just the same way the exam would work. And the purpose of this is not to review the, for the review for the exam. None of the questions on the sample exam are going to be on the exam, but this is to give you an idea of how to complete the exam. So it gives you a question. You, there's a scroll bars where you scroll down to answer these questions. Um, as best you can you know and it just it just fill this out quickly so you'll see these blue boxes and these will be you know these are test some test questions can be multi-part like this one and then you'll see there'll be a button here to go to the next question and then you can move forward to the next question and it'll show you the time remaining as you're working on the exam and as you go through you see that the questions here and you can even go, looks like on this one, you can go back if you wanted to change an answer uh, because it's right now you're in the time. Go ahead, next, and next. And we just keep going. So the, the, this says, you know, mostly multiple choice, but the test has, um, there can be some quantitative problems as well as qualitative problems on the, on the real tests. And then here's another example of a problem. So then when you're done, you want to click Submit Test. Um, you, you have not completed your assignment. You still have one unanswered question. Okay. So it's telling me I have one question that's unanswered. So I can go back and see which question did I miss? This question. So that was a nice little double check. And now I can go um, back to the end. Or anytime I can hit this Submit Test, and it will submit... And say, are you sure? And you submit the test and you're done. And then once everybody has submitted the test, you can, once the test is over the next day, you can go in and review your results and you can see which questions you got right and wrong um, for the, the whole test, including some feedback. Okay. So that's just an example exam of how the exams will work. So I always encourage you to try the sample exam to make sure this exam format will work on your computer and you have no issues. So when you do the real midterm or final, you have a good idea of what it's going to look like and how it works with the time clock and everything. Now, when you do a homework assignment, the first, all the homework assignment due dates are here for, for you. So make sure you take note of these assignment due dates because I will not accept any late assignments. And you can easily go into any of these homeworks when you're ready to complete them. You click on the homework. You click on the you click on the question, and then you'll have the, the read out the question. Then you're going to put in the answer, and then you can check the answer. And oops, I got it wrong. So then I can maybe read it again and try to get an idea of what did I do wrong. I'm looking for the bid spread, and I have to take this number, subtract it from this number. So uh, how much would that be? Let's see. So then it'll give you a hint on how to complete it. And then once you have that hint, you want to also make sure you round to the nearest cent on this. So I'm going to put in what I think is the answer. I can check the answer. And I got it right. And it tells me I got it right, so I can move into the next part of the question. Um, and then if you do uh, get it wrong and you check the answer, you get a couple tries. And then you've got that final check. So once you do that final check, if you got it wrong, then that stays wrong and you move into the next part of the question. So again, you, when you see the check answer, you know that you have a chance to redo it. But when you get the final check, that's it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. You just have to move on. So, 
and you know, and it will even give you basically is giving you the formula here and how to complete it. But also, what you can do if you're just not getting it, you're getting it wrong. You can. There are other things you can do um, down here. It says, "Help me solve this." View an example. So click on view an example. And it's going to walk you through step by step the calculation with numbered examples on how to complete all steps of this question. So it's going to give you instructions, step by step instructions on how to answer each of the questions. So that's a great way to view the example or you can click on e-textbook pages to go to the part of the textbook that you need to study to learn how to complete this problem with examples. Or you can view it, this is what I think is the best, to view an example live where it gives you the actual question and numbers based. This is a similar question, not the same numbers, but it gives you similar numbers and it shows you how you could calculate it uh, and how the calculation is done. So it's a great way to help you get through these homeworks. Okay, then you move on to the next question and you complete you know, each of the questions. Uh, and then when you complete the, the, the homework, all the questions in the homework, you'll get a final, you'll get a final grade for the homework once all the questions have been completed. And you can stop the homework and then resume at a later date to finish it as long as you resume before the due date. Uh, now, when you when you do complete a homework, so this homework has three questions, you know. So you get a lot of chances, but there's, you know. So let me just finish the homework here. So, okay. And you can see how they're multi, multi, multi-part questions. And you just go through and it takes some time, but once you're done, you get, you get, you'll get a final score for each of the homeworks. Now, after you get that final score, you have to complete the homework entirely. And once you're done, you can go to the results and see your results for the homework. And if you don't, and if you are not happy with the results, you can go back into the assignment and you can start the assignment over. And it will, you know, it'll be, uh, you can start over or redo button. And once you start over, it erases everything you've done. You have to start back at square one. But you can only do this after you've submitted the, the whole homework once and you've gotten a grade. Then you can go back in and you can try it again if you don't like your, your final grade on the homework. Okay. So that's the third area. I was going to say results where you can go in and you can view the results for your, your homework. Once the homework is closed, you can view, view your results, see how you did and look at the problems. And here's a big hint for the exams. I take a lot of the uh, homework questions and I convert them to exam questions. So this is this review area is a good way, a good place and a good way to study for your exam. Now also in results, if you click on the show calculation, it will show you how your percentile um, rank is being, your percentile grade is being calculated. So this is, this percentile grade is what's going to be your final grade. And this builds up as you complete each of the homeworks and the exams. This will, this will average everything together on your homeworks. You have 11 homeworks. You have three exams. The sample exam doesn't count for you or against you. And then this will start building your grades. So this is how you check your final grade is in results. So we'll show you your final grade for your class. And you can show the overall and give you the exact points you're earning and the exact percentile for each of the assignments that you complete. So this really builds up your whole catalog, your portfolio of homeworks and tests to give you the final grade for the course. Now, all the grades will be in my finance lab. So eventually I'll also put in the grade for the simulation. I'll add in here too later once the simulation has been completed. Okay. So that's my video on how to register for the homework manager, how to complete each individual homework, how to review the homework, and even review your all your total grades for the class and the results. So these are really the three tabs you'll be using, the Pearson eText, the assignments, and the results. Okay, thank you for your time, and I hope you found this helpful.